welcome to Wrightsville United Methodist Church. Come on in. Good morning, grace and peace to you, and welcome to worship this morning at Wrightsville United Methodist Church. Whether this is your first time joining us for worship or you've been with us about as long as you can remember, we are so glad that you are here. We have a couple of announcements to share with you before we begin our worship service together. One is that we are, believe that we are called to be the church this year. And so our theme for the season of Easter is be the church by reaching across through fellowship, reaching across to one another, our brothers and sisters in Christ. So there are many ways that you can do this during the season. One is outdoor worship in Wrightsville Beach Park at 9 a.m., weather permitting, or worship in the water at 4 p.m. at South Channel Park, also weather permitting. We have another couple of opportunities, though, for you to get together with some folks in person. One is that we are going to be hosting a farewell celebration for Pastor Hope Vickers after the 9 a.m. worship service next Sunday, May 9th. That's going to be held around about 10 o'clock, and so whether or not you're able to make it out for worship in the park, we invite you to come by and to bid farewell and say a warm thank you and happy retirement to Pastor Hope as we send her off to this new chapter in her life. Another opportunity to reach across in fellowship is by supporting our softball team. Our softball team has been getting together and fellowshipping and, you know, fielding those runs. I don't know about baseball, but I bet you do. And so we invite you to come out tomorrow, May 3rd at 6.45 p.m. in Olson Park. You know, bring your pom-poms or, you know, just, just bring your good old self, but we invite you to reach across in fellowship. A couple other opportunities to reach out and to connect. One is that we are going to be offering Vacation Bible School this year, both in video and a COVID safe in person. That is June 14th through 18th, and we have spots that will go quickly. So check out your eBlast website app or email Christina Norville for more information on that. We also are going to be inviting you to bring in some underwear for Undie Sundays. Our outreach committee is in need of new underwear of all sizes for men and women. These will be shared with our neighbors who are unsheltered, who are experiencing homelessness, and they will be shared with our friends at Feast Gathering United Methodist Church. So you can place those any Sunday in May under, no pun intended, the uh, fellowship hall in those plastic bins. And last but not least, we want to celebrate our Super Service Saturday this past, uh, this past weekend. And so here's a little something from our outreach committee. Many thanks to all who participated in Super Service Saturday. We constructed a little library box, prepared two meals for 60 unsheltered neighbors, served and visited with our neighbors at Link, prepared and delivered 112 blessing bags to the classic members of Wrightsville and dug in the dirt at the Willowdale Urban Farm. So we are so grateful for all of you who came out and served. Now I invite you to maybe take a breath to center yourself and to text one of your neighbors or friends, may the peace of Christ be with you.
I invite you to join me in our opening prayer. Loving God, help us to love others as Christ has loved us. Today, as we worship, bring us into the spiritual joy of living our lives as your friends and teach us to abide in your love so that we may show, that we may embody, that we may spread that love to the world. In Christ's name, we ask all these things. Amen. And now I invite you to join us in our opening hymn. The words will be found on your screen. fourth grade at St. Mark's Catholic School and today I'm going to be reading Psalms chapter 22 verses 25 through 31. From your comes the theme of my praise and great assembly. Before those who fear you I will fulfill my vows. The poor will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations will bow down before him. For domain belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the rich of the earth will feast and worship. All who go down to the dust will kneel before him. Those who cannot keep themselves alive, property will serve him. Future generosities will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness, declaring to a people yet unborn, he has done it. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It's always a thrill to welcome new people into the body of Christ. And today it's a daddy-daughter baptism special. And so we're really excited to welcome the Ray family this morning. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given a new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without Christ. And so I present Robert Ernest the III and Sawyer Elizabeth Ray for Christian baptism. And so I ask you on behalf of the whole church, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, your answer is, we do. We do. Do you accept the freedom and power that God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you? We do. And do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord? In union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. Do you? We do. And will you nurture this child in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example, she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself, to profess her faith openly, and lead a Christian life? Will you? We will. Oh, awesome.
So you see the water? Yeah. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the ways that you have used water from the very beginning of time. And today we ask that you will pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and they who receive it, to wash away their sin and clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in Jesus' final victory. Robbie, we'll start with you. Sawyer, you want to watch? Watch that. Robert Reynolds, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sawyer, now it's your turn. Sawyer Elizabeth, I baptize you in the name of the Father <laughs> and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And Sarah, if you want to lay hands on both your husband and your daughter, and I'll invite everyone that's here, we've got family that's present here today to lift your hands and also those that are watching on the screen. Robert Reynolds and Sarah Elizabeth, saw your Elizabeth, the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now it's our joy to welcome our new brother and sister in Christ, and so I invite you to pray with me. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of baptism in which you pour out your Spirit to us. Lord, for the entire Ray family, that today especially for Robbie, for Sawyer, yeah. Lord, as you have poured out your yeah. grace, Lord, I pray that this is just the beginning of an incredible Christian journey for them. As we, the church, uh, help to guide them, as you show that you will love them unconditionally, and as parents, as Sarah and Robbie are making this incredible uh, commitment to raise their child to know your son, Jesus Christ our Lord. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who works in the hidden stillness of every dawn, who beckons us to visit the tomb of our fears so that we might discover the birth of hope. We believe in Jesus, the risen Christ, who has come to reconcile and make new, who meets us on every path, who, who greets us with respect, respect. Names and calms our fears. It's us to walk and talk as children of the light. We believe in the Holy Spirit. Who works through the wrinkled and the newborn. The hurting and the hopeful. Who nudges our prayers. Who kindles our longings and prompts our praise. We, we believe, believe that, that we are called to be, to be the, the church. church. To celebrate God's presence. To live with respect. For creation to love and serve others to seek justice and resist evil to, to proclaim, proclaim jesus, jesus crucified and risen. risen our judge and our hope in life in death in life beyond death god is with us god is with us god is with us god is always with us we are not alone Thanks be to God. Though I may speak with brave aspire and have the gift to all inspire but have not love my words are vain as sounding brass and hopeless gain though I may kill all I possess and striving so my love profess but not 
not be given by love within the prophet soon turns strange within Spirit come, our hearts control, our spirits long to be made whole. Let inward love guide every deed, by this we worship, and the free, by this we worship, and are free. Because we are children of God, because God loves us and invites us to love our neighbors, we go to God in prayer. We always leave a time to name a person or situation during a moment of silence in our prayers. We invite you to lift up the family of Francis Knowles in prayer this week. Miss Francis passed away this week. And just a little bit about Miss Francis. She was involved in children's and youth ministry at Wrightsville United Methodist Church for over 60 years. And she most recently taught high school Sunday school for several years. And I remember when I came learning that she called each of her high school Sunday school students every Saturday to invite them to church. And so her loss will leave a big impact on so many within our church. We are grateful for the gifts that she shared with others. And tomorrow, Monday at noon in Oleander Gardens, her family will lay her to rest and remember her. And so all are welcome. And now I invite you to pray with me. Loving God, word of life, we pray that your love would surround us behind and before, above and below. O oh God, you are our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. And so God, hear our prayer. We pray for our sisters and brothers who endure disasters caused by weather or war, famine or sickness or greed. Strengthen all who are in peril, the poor and the desperate, as well as those who abuse and oppress them, both here and abroad. Comfort all those who suffer, God. And we pray that you would change the hearts of those who cause their suffering, so that your justice might be known in all the earth. O oh Lord God, we pray that you would heal the broken places and imbue your earth with peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. O oh God, we pray for the sick and the dying for all those who are friendless and lonely, for those living with grief or anxiety or depression, for those who feel themselves maybe languishing in ways they cannot even name. O oh Lord, bring them, bring us your friendship, renew their joy and their love. And O oh God, we pray for ourselves, your church, that we would bear your fruit of peace, hope and love, fruit that will last. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. O good healer, we pray for all in need of comfort. Comfort those who mourn, uphold those who are sick or who hold vigil or who await words of hope, especially those we name before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We ask all of these things in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. And we pray as he taught us to pray, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 
Now this is our time of offering. Through our offerings, God shares God's love to a world that is in need of comfort. And so we invite you to offer your many gifts as one offering together with your brothers and sisters. There are a couple different ways that you can give. One is by writing a check and sending it to P.O. Box 748, Wrightsville Beach 28480. The other is through our smartphone app. And the third is at wrightsvilleumc.org. And so now, as you hear this music played, let us share God's love with the world. Good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, or happy Tuesday. I am so glad that you are here. You know what is one of my favorite words? We used it last week in children's sermon. Do you know what it is? It starts with an L, and it ends with an of. Do you know what it is? That's right, love, L-O-V-E. Well, that's one of my favorite words because it talks about what God is and what God does, and also who we are and what we do. Pastor Doug is going to read us a scripture from the Bible, and it has that word love over and over again in it. And I have a book that talks about God's love and what God did because God loved us. And it was that God made us, and God made us to love. So I'm going to share a little bit of this book with you. I like the pictures, and so Mr. Ryan's going to zoom in on them. But this is called When God Made You by Matthew Paul Turner. I'm going to see if I can read upside down. You, you, when God made you, God made you all shiny and new, an incredible you, a you all your own, 
a not unlike anyone, a you unlike anyone else ever known. See, I can't read upside down, it's hard. An exclusive design, one God refined. You're a perfectly crafted one of a kind. Because when God made you, somehow God knew that the world needed someone exactly like you. You, you, God thinks about you. God was thinking of you long before your debut. From the very beginning, amidst history and time, you, little one, never left God's mind. I'm going to skip a couple pages. So be you, fully you, a show-stopping review. Live your life in full color, every tint, every hue. Discover, explore, have faith, but love more. And learn and relearn all that God made you for. Use your talents and passions, those gifts that God fashioned. Think up ideas and then put them into action. Because God loves you creating, your true self displaying. When light on the inside through art is portraying. When you make believe the stories conceived, the heroics, the magic, those tricks up your sleeve. See any tricks up your sleeve? When you dance alone, spinning like a cyclone, being whoever, whatever, in a world all your own. God smiles, and here's why. In the spark of your eye, a familiar reflection shines bright from inside. Because when God made you, hmm, when God made you and the world oohed and awed, <laughs> in heaven, they called you an image of God. It's hard to read upside down. You, you, when God dreams about you, God dreams about all that in you will be true. That you, God's you, will be hopeful and kind, a giver who lives with all heart, soul, and mind. A dreamer who dreams in big and small themes, one who keeps dreaming in journeys upstream. A mover, a shaker, a lover of nature, a builder of bridges, you, the peacemaker. A you who views others as sisters and brothers and lives by three words. You know what those three words are? Love one another. A confident you, strong and brave too. You being you is God's dream coming true. Because when God made you, all of heaven was beaming. Over you, God was smiling and already dreaming. I love that book, don't you? I love especially that part that says, you were an image of God. Pastor Doug's going to tell us that God is love. And so when we love, we are living God's dream. So let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for making us. Help us love like you do. Amen. All right. See you next week. Good morning. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So glad that you're here with us, worshiping at Wrightsville United Methodist Church. Thanks for taking time to join us today. Our scripture today comes from a, a book that's near the back of the Bible, but the message is so basic, it feels like it ought to maybe come at the start of the Bible. Maybe you'll see what I mean as you listen. I'm in 1 John chapter 4. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. 
In this is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. And those who abide in love abide in God and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment. Whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Gracious God of love, thank you for reaching out to us in love, for creating us in love, for redeeming us in love, for sustaining us in love and continuing to shower us with your love. Lord, may we be a people of love. In Jesus' name, amen. Once there was a young woman who wanted a boyfriend. Her mom wanted to help her out, so she set her up on a blind date. When the girl got back from the date, she said, that was the worst night of my life. Why is that, her mom asked. Well, for one, he owns a 1933 Rolls Royce. Isn't that a good thing? Mom, he's the original owner. When someone says, I love you, the natural reply is, I love you too. If you're in a loving relationship with someone, you expect those words in response. Our passage from 1 John today tells us that this is the kind of relationship that God has with us. It's not just about saying the words, though. In the chapter before this one, we see John write, Little children, let us love not in word and speech, but in truth and action. And in this chapter, he says it like this, We love because God first loved us. Anyone who's ever started at Genesis and tried to read the Bible all the way through to the end will tell you it's not easy. It can be very confusing if you're trying to figure out the nature of God. The Bible isn't written like a systematic theology book. In some places, God is loving and nurturing, providing for all of his people's needs. And in other places, God is so angry that he wipes out entire cities with the snap of his fingers. In some places, he's a rock that can't be moved. And in other places, a conversation with a mere mortal can change his mind. In some places, God is insisting that people must follow his laws if they want to live. And in other places, he's merciful and ready to give people another chance when they stray. You see, what we have in the Bible is the story of a relationship. It's about the relationship between God and God's people. Now, it's told from the perspective of the people, with the only thing they have to go on being their own limited experience. From their perspective, they do the best they can to figure out who God is. We do the same thing. We all try to make sense of God according to what is going on in our own lives, based on our own individual experiences. But we have added information about God that people in Old Testament times didn't have. We don't have to wonder what God is like. We know. John's gospel explains it this way. No one has ever seen God, he writes. It is God, the only son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. If we want to know what God is like, all we have to do is look at Jesus. In his epistle, John is able to elaborate more on what he means by this. Unless we miss the point, he cuts to the chase and spells it out in three simple words. God is love. Of all the ways we can describe the nature of God, this is the most fundamental. God is love. 
It's not just a theory. It's a fact. How do we know it? Well, God becomes a human being and lives among us. He embodied compassion through his actions and his teachings. He healed the sick, touched the untouchables. He embraced those that others turned away. He spoke on behalf of those who had no voice. He taught us to serve one another in humility and even to love our enemies. He stood up to those who put following the rules above mercy and compassion. His entire life was given in love, and it didn't end there. In death, he gave himself in love as well. He went to a cross because he could only be who he was. He stretched out his arms in love for the world, and they nailed his hands to a wooden cross. Let there be no doubt about what God is all about. Look at Jesus, and you will see. God is love. Now, that's not just a nice thought that you put on a greeting card. It changes everything for us. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another, John writes. Our lives are given in response to God's love given to us. A lot of times we miss this. We may live in the way we think God wants us to live out of fear. That's living by the law. Or we may live in the way we think God wants us to live out of love. That's living by grace. When I was around 12 years old, I started making money by mowing many of my neighbor's yards. It was good money for a 12-year-old back in the early 80s. So one day, my mom asked me to mow our own yard, and I asked her how much she was going to pay me. She said, nothing. You'll do it because you're part of this family. All your needs are provided for, and you need to take on more responsibilities around the house. I said, no way. She said, yes way. I said, no again, and I walked out of the house. With absolutely no plan whatsoever, I continued down the street. And then like Forrest Gump, I just kept on walking. Looking back on it, I suspect it was just hormonal changes in those middle school years that made me want to assert some independence. I don't know. Where was I going? The more I walked, the more I realized this was not a good idea at all. This was long before cell phones, and I was walking. I was not on a bike, so I needed some kind of plan. Where can I go? Who would be home? Who would understand me and comfort me? I know, my grandmother. That's right. I ran away from home by going to my grandmother's house. My grandparents lived a mile and a half away on the other side of a very busy street, kind of like crossing College Road in Wilmington. When I got to my grandmother's house, she asked me what I was doing there. I told her I was mad at my mom, her own daughter, by the way, and that I just needed to go somewhere. I'll never forget what she said. She didn't give me a lecture. She didn't say, your mother must be worried sick about you. Instead, she said, I won't take you home right away, but I do need to call your mom and let her know that you're safe. And so I went inside and just cooled down until about dinner time when my mom came and picked me up and took me home. My grandmother was always very proper. She didn't like for me to ever get out of line. She always wanted me to sit up straight and she tried to instill in me good manners. But when I needed her to be, she was also full of mercy and grace. As God's beloved children, he expects us to love one another. Not because he's going to stop loving us if we don't do what he tells us to do, but precisely because he's never going to stop loving us no matter what we do. That's why John can make the bold assertion that there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment. And whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. You remember last week's story about the Good Samaritan, where Jesus was asked by a lawyer what we need to do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said, well, what do you read in the law? And the man said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and all your strength, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus told him, you've answered correctly. Do this and you shall live. For Jesus, these are not two separate laws to live by. These are two parts of the same law. The way to love God 
is by loving your neighbor. It's not just a matter of saying, I love you, God, over and over again. It's about showing our love for God in the way we love other people. It sounds so easy, doesn't it? And yet as Christians, our failure to love others because God first loved us has caused untold problems throughout history. In the Good Samaritan story, the lawyer tries looking for a loophole. So he asks, who is my neighbor? He's hoping to narrow the field. But Jesus shared a parable that greatly expanded the field to include anyone that's in need. Unfortunately, we still look for loopholes today. The most common I hear is that in order to help someone, they have to deserve it. That's not actually a Christian point of view. That's a worldly point of view. Jesus went to the cross for sinners, not for the sinless. Our question should not be, do they deserve it? But instead it should be, do they need it? Is there a need that I can help with? Unfortunately, our track record is far from perfect. In the name of God, we Christians have fought countless wars. We've burned people at the stake. We have closed our ears to the cries of the poor and the hungry. We have locked our doors and our hearts to people that we deem unworthy to be in community with. We have hung people from trees because we don't like the color of their skin. We have prospered materially from the desperation of those that we don't even know. And we do all these things and more in the name of God. God is love. Why don't we get it? If John had said God is hate, our actions might make more sense. But God isn't hate. God is love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God and hate their brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. My good friend Jason Biasi, who teaches preaching at Vancouver School of Theology, once wrote, while people may like to go to the mall, the restaurant, or even church with people just like them, the Church of Jesus Christ is a calling into a Jew plus Gentile community where the enemy you'd rather avoid is always sitting next to you. You may not like it, but it's the only way to salvation, according to the Savior who hung, hung on a cross between two thieves. Why is it so difficult for us? How is it possible for us to know and experience the love of God in our lives and withhold that same love from others? Maybe the key for us is opening ourselves up to receiving the love of God in our own lives. So often we're closed off and God's love doesn't stand a chance. It's like putting a lid on a cup and expecting someone to pour water into it. But when we open ourselves up to God's love, it's like removing the lid and filling our cup underneath a waterfall. The writer Annie Dillard says, You catch grace as a man fills his cup under a waterfall. Imagine what that would look like. Our cup is filled and spilling out just all over the place. We can't possibly contain it all. That's what happens when God's love fills our lives. He fills us to overflowing, and his love spills out on everyone around us. Our God says to us, I love you. And through Jesus Christ, we know those are more than just words alone. I love you, he says. And we respond to his love, not just with words alone, but with lives that say, I love you too. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pray with me. God of mercy and grace, you have shown us love even when we don't deserve it. Even when we make mistakes. Even when we try to keep grace to ourselves. Holy God, thank you for filling our cup like a waterfall. May that grace bounce off of us onto the people around us. May we be instruments of your grace. In the name of your Son, our Lord. Amen.
As a people who have received God's love, go forth into the world, sharing that love everywhere you go. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.